Ralph Sanji, WGSO. Ladies and gentlemen, the last president of the United States of America. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on... Battle of New Orleans Radio with your hosts, Nathan Lawrenson, Caleb Hitt, and Goyle, or 990 WGSO. In 1814, we Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Battle of New Orleans Radio. I'm Nathan Lawrenson, along with my fabulous cast and crew, in-studio crew. We got, we got Mr. Payne Monsanto. We got Goyle. Hey, what's up? And we also have Brian. What's up, Brian? Hey, what's up? And it's another awesome night to be in studio. We're really uh, grateful, blessed, and we appreciate all the listeners out there tuning us in. And look, please, please go subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Battle NOLA Radio YouTube channel. Go hit that subscribe button. And look, you can listen each and every week on the TuneIn app if you cannot you know, be here in the New Orleans area. You know, of course, at night, the signal's a little lower around the area. So sometimes, even if you're in this area, you have to listen They're via tune. They're trying to censor us. Yeah, yeah, right, Joe. You know what I mean? So, speaking of which, make sure you hit the bell when you subscribe so you get the notifications on YouTube because they change that up. Hit that little bell. That's right. That's right. You know, so look, download the podcast, share it with your friends and family. Um, we're going to start using our Facebook page a lot more for uh, Battle NOLA Radio. So we'll have updates and stories on there and, and featured guests. We were supposed to have Scott Bennett in this week. He was coming last week, and then he couldn't do it last minute. And this week he was scheduled. That's the uh, Booz Allen Hamilton uh, whistleblower, second lieutenant. Um, great guy. He's been on the show several times before. I uh, love his information. So he couldn't, I couldn't get in touch with we gotta him. got to get him on. Uh, nine, yeah. yeah 19,000 CIA yeah, nineteen yeah, nineteen thousand CIA connected bank accounts to Union Bank of Switzerland via uh, Brad Birkenfeld being the banker there, and he ended up being in federal prison with Brad Birkenfeld, and they they found this out. Brad Birkenfeld got one hundred eight million dollars from the CIA they gave him when he got out. You know, so nineteen thousand bank accounts connected from our government to ISIS. Oh, I thought we were fighting ISIS. I, I mean. I mean, I thought I thought we were over there. Uh, I thought we were bombing Assad to stop ISIS when he was really fighting ISIS. And then and then you got man, Iran's the big bad boogeyman. They're ISIS, but wait, Iran was over there actually fighting ISIS too. And Russia, the, the, those terrible Ruskies, they were fighting ISIS too. The only one that wasn't fighting ISIS was who else? Um, the United States. Oh, us in Israel. Us. Some senator lady found that out. What's her name? Yes, Senator Senator Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii. She's a Democrat who supports Trump. Like Trump. a real Democrat. Yeah. You know, like the real liberals and Democrats are now centrist. It yeah. seems. Yeah. You know, they're you know that's if that's what you are after all. But many just they kept that suit on. That they just are playing that liberal part. They're total they're livid. They're totalitarians. <laughs> most of these people. I mean, they want tolerance, but then they want to. They want to support people that behead you if you're not it, tolerant. It's something to behold. Yes, it's total 1984. You know, but look, this this lady, this congresswoman, I actually emailed her today and emailed her office to get her on the show. I'm going to do everything in my Kudos. power. That's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to email her a copy of the, and I'm just brainstorming out loud, a YouTube video of our, our interview with Professor Tim Anderson. He wrote the book, The Dirty War on Syria. Great interview. Doesn't have a lot of views on YouTube. Go watch that on YouTube you know, go check that out. Great, great, great interview. Man, we have yeah. so many shows that are archived. And archived, yep. That, that are just fantastic. G. Edward Griffin and, and Tim. I mean, just so many. So y'all Sitting look there. That's why it's time. It's time. You know, we got to. We want you to tell. If you like Battle and Nola Radio, you have to tell three people at least. Or you really don't appreciate us. That's what Payday Monsanto was saying personally. Nothing to do with the show. 
I'm just saying, you know, Battle of Nola Radio as an entity and what it does every week. Nathan and Goyam go to great lengths to get great guests and to see you know, great shows hey, hey, sitting hey, there where they could they could be listened to because they're so enlightening and informative. So you know, that's going. I'm going to make it my duty. And I'm, I feel duty bound to a, to a great extent to expand the listenership of, of Battle and Nola Radio, whether that's terrestrial, which is a beautiful thing, or it's cyber, you know, you know, ethereal, whatever. You know, pay because if you if you appreciate us, tell three friends, send a link to three people at least. No, that that's a great idea. We need Eat. support. Yep. And you know what, Payday? We are a listener supported. Uh, show that, for, at this point th that's on. right you know what payday you was a guest and now look look how crazy this is look how crazy this is we got payday monsanto, payday in monsanto New Orleans. lives down here works down here part of the show i mean i was a listener i came into the studio now we got brian in studio he's a listener <laughs> well, i was a listener as well not just a guest yeah. you know uh, even I, I listened to every show that i could and it was on it when i can as well could be as well but it's it, something else now i'm in the studio you know <laughs> As a part of the show, and I want to help keep it rolling. That's why, you know, I appreciate um, Battle of New Orleans Radio. So I'm going to tell, tell three people. I'm going to try to tell 3,000 people this month. So, I mean, come on. If you appreciate us, the least you could do is tell three people. Three people that, you know, good friends that you think have an open mind and, and we, like and, good stuff. And I think uh, Nathan's trying to put together something March 17th on St. Patrick's Day there for... Uh Maybe a Payday Monsanto uh, live performance, perhaps, with the Battle of New Orleans? Perhaps. Uh, perhaps. perhaps. Crawfish boil, something like that, Nathan? Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, we, and, yo, we, we, get, we're, we get good guests. That's p bottom line, you know? So, And we're going to continue to get good guests. I mean, and, dude, we've had the food, babe. We've had, we've had, you Ronda know. Shear, David yeah, Duke, David Black Duke. Panthers. You know, I mean, you, you got Professor White Fetzer, Panthers. who loves the show, probably just That's because right. of the old terrestrial yeah. radio feeling. Which is fine. It's beautiful. Bill, Bill Benny. Great guest. Bill Benny, who used to be the head of the NSA, damn near. He was the technical director. I mean, dude. T. Edward a Griffin. Haslam, yeah, that a guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that, that was a great show. I mean, there's just so many great shows. And Wayne we, we encourage you to go to the YouTube channel and listen, like, and subscribe. You know. Andrew Wakefield. If you enjoy it, Vax, which I'm sure director. you will. Wakefield. Yep. Interviewed the whole cast, basically, of Vax. Hey, before anybody else did that, we did that. Mm. I heard Trump was talking about that movie Vax the other day. He was talking about Wakefield. Yeah, he's something. Uh, Trump's yeah. anti-vaccine. I think he's got either a grandson or I, I'm somebody in his family has a vaccine damaged hey, child. Yeah, listen, yeah. this is straight from the heart. Didn't talk about this before the show, but I, listen, my take on Trump's been in office what two weeks now or a week and a half. Okay, for he's a smart man. We all know this. Okay, he's a smart, smart man. He's a businessman, Gentile in New York. He's worked with them. He's done. All, we talked about all this over well, and over. At seven, seventy-five percent Gentile. Okay, so yeah, his son-in-law. All right, so no, no him, my, him personally. My point is, okay, the moves he made last Wednesday when he said, "Look, we're going forward with the pipeline." Right, Brian. Right, Payday, Nathan. We he said he we're going forward with the pipeline. Then the next day he says we're going forward with the wall. Now a lot of people who supported him they want that. But the fact that he's doing this so rapidly, and the protests are yeah. going hot lock step with and it. Look, it man, it's like I don't know. Do y'all think this is something that was again? This makes me think maybe somebody's got their paws on him, or do you think dude, he's uncontrolled? Dude, I I sound like a Rush Limbaugh in my head. This liberal media. Yeah, I'll liberal. tell you what. The, the 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 media at this point has so much power over people's perception because they'll tell you that there no walls being built. Yet you can zoom. You know, was it uh, Politico? Whoever they took a picture of his man, and they zoomed in with the cat. You know, they looked, and on it it said "Rapid Build Wall, night seventeen, you know, a uh, hundred miles," and they'll still have you believe that there's no wall planned on being built. Mm -hmm. You know, they they pay they regardless of how big their listenership or viewership is, they still put out the narrative. So yeah. even though they are meaningless yeah. and. And for the record, I think the wall is 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 a pork. It's a bloated thing. We don't need a wall. All we have to do is enforce the law. Enforce the law and cut right, off. That's simple. Cut off the monopoly show game prizes yeah. that they give to the illegal. Yeah, the dream card, yeah. incentive based. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Brian. I see. I heard they, uh, You're talking to your mic, Brian. I heard. They, Pulling they, Alex Jones real quick. Eighty dollars an hour to build the wall. 
you get well, fired. I, I, I was just going to say it. If it's, and plus, if it creates jobs, not I, that that's yeah. a justification. You think they'll sub, sub me out a section? So, <laughs> they said the yeah. project is only going to. I got workers' cut. Cost twelve to fifteen billion. That's cheap. Yeah, that, that's nothing. That's nothing. It, you well, know. Well, he, look, he he's giving companies tax breaks that are that are absolutely feasible. You know, and as far as you know, vis a vis facing. Uh, sust- building an economy. He's giving companies tax breaks, tax breaks on one hand, and then he's going to penalize them on the other hand if they choose to leave. I, listen, which is only fair, and that's a deterrence. Yeah. I mean, that's a solution in and of itself Payday. to bring jobs back to your country. Absolutely. My, you tell people if they leave, you know, well, you're not going to be able to have that luxury of just uh, coming and going as you please. You're going to pay a 35 percent tariff. Mm-hmm. Well, my point on Trump was, if he's that smart, wouldn't he have gone a little bit slower with these? moves if he wanted not to per se erupt the civil unrest yeah, but we yeah, know they want to they know they want to start but yeah, you know go, they, they knew that they the globalists want the civil unrest they have to have it and within the last week i mean this is the mo- this is the most protest any one of us on earth has ever seen any of us I in think our 30s so cartoonish goyim that pe- more and more uh, people are exponentially i mean the the drop off is so steep people are just exponentially not believing what because Look at the uh, just type in CNN lies in YouTube. But, you know what I mean, and you'll see all, all the ways in which they manipulate. They think that their listeners are so stupid, but most of them aren't. But, and I'll tell you what, G- CNN is 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 in the home of uh, you know it's Geritol consumers, mm-hmm. geriatrics, and it's on mute at bars. Yeah. That's you know airports, that's, every that's airport. Seventy five percent of CNN's. Viewership. I guess what I'm saying is this: either a Trump is co-opted and he's ushering in the protest because he's knowingly pushing these things out, knowing that this is going to create so much uh, protest and hatred, yeah. or he's doing exa- or what else could you, uh, they, I, I just, think he's just doing just what, doing what, what he's he, doing, what just he do it as much as he like can. Nike. And yeah. even he said, "What scares me with Trump?" He says, "You know, are you? Are you I think who asked him? You know, are you going to fulfill the promises you made?" And he says, "As many as I can, because you know." And then he paused for a minute, and then he goes to the go-to answer that, you know, sometimes the Democrat, the other party is not going to let you get it through. The, the and weird, that's just listen, a cop-out. Look, he when, can use that bully pulpit just like he did when he was campaigning. He, he can, can make the Twitter. American people force it. He can make it. the American people scream it from the rooftops. But look how ready these Soros types and entities but, are uh, with these protests, with the signs that we saw at Duncan Plaza last Friday. Look, watch the Super Bowl this Sunday. They're going to have a big thing before the show about I this. Uh, I, I know you, they're going to have it pre-prepared. So what I'm thinking is, is he playing good cop, bad cop with us? Or is he really true? I don't know. Look, because the fact to me, if he was if he was really smart, he probably would go a little bit slower with you, the process. You, but then again, I guess you got to go balls out, right? I want to throw out 14 other you know aspects and dynamics to this, is that, look, that could be you know, but we got to remember these are paid protesters, and then the media could just be pushing this whole narrative, and it could be a lot smaller than what it, it really is. I mean, there's just so many, there's just a lot of dynamic to this whole situation. But ultimately, look, these people are paid to do this, and it could be spec ops, it could be special operations, and, and as much as foreign troops setting off uh you know a lot of this activity you go back to the g20 in 1999 and this was happening they had special operations Absolutely. out there look ballon nolan uh ballon new orleans radio right here in the home of the first amendment 990 a.m wgso in the heart of the crescent city we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen we're back battle nola radio right here on 990 am wgso go hit that subscribe button on our youtube channel it's battle nola radio you get all the new shows um, you can go check out all the old shows as well. And there's a ton of them that I haven't put on YouTube, or Caleb has uh, Larry Nichols interviews, Ed Haslam interviews, and just a ton of other ones. So you can also go to uh, BattleNola.com, and they have some of the old shows starting from last year going all the way back to the beginning. So if it's not on YouTube, go to BattleNola.com, and you can you can check out and download a podcast from every week. So go check that out. Look, I never got to finish up. Before we, we, we jump back to Trump, because this ties into Trump, I never got to finish up telling you what this congresswoman, uh, Miss Tulsi Gabbard, did. She she went to Syria. She's a Trump supporter, seen the war crimes that we have committed, uh, that Barack Obama, this this peacetime president, uh, Nobel Peace Prize, yeah yeah, he's bombed he's bombed so many countries. It's ridiculous. Um, 
that he's decimated this whole nation, okay? And he, we've been funding ISIS and al-Qaeda and these, these Wahhabist groups over there the whole time. And she, she met Bashir al-Assad, not on purpose, but just in her, her little journey across the country. And he's nothing like the media portrays. You know, it's been disproven about him and the chemical weapons, you know, that the United Nations says – that uh, he possessed and, you know, released on his own people. That has been disproven. Uh, the same, try, same thing with Saddam. Same, that's what they do. That's their game plan. That's the same. It, absolutely. That's been disproven. Well, she met him. Everything that they're telling us is falsehood. We've destroyed that country. Uh, Europeans used to travel to that country on vacation just five, six, seven years ago. Now it's decimated. Now the same thing is happening you know, Yemen's being des destroyed, and I've heard a lot of Trump supporters, even today on Jeff Cruer's show, somebody, somebody mentioned that, look, the terrorists in Yemen, we shouldn't allow them over here. But we've been bombing this poor, pitiful, pissant country like Yemen for Saudi Arabia, okay, for the last, what, year and a half? I mean, Yemen had some beautiful uh, uh, old yeah, but uh, artifacts and stuff. So she went over there and seen that. Yeah. And then now she, she was touched. I think you could see. I could see it in her telegram and her demeanor. It, but I mean, this follows the script. But notice, we're not bombing. You know, it's not the United States, but the United States by proxy well, is you, over there decimating Yemen. But we, you know, you, when we do that, it's we, like when we did it to Iraq, it was flourishing. It was the the uh, it had the highest standard of living in the Middle East. When Libya started to flourish, when Gaddafi started to build the aquifer. And just started to throw his people all the money that they needed. There was really no home. He lived in a tent. I mean, he said, "Reproduce, Lord. reproduce." Every one of these uh, leaders, you know, he had to go. And you know, the, I think there no was, you can Central tell by Bank. Hillary's demeanor and her reaction when she says, "You know, you can tell that there was a bounty out for that." Yeah. <laughs> there was a bounty out for him. Yeah. Whoever can get the can, can, and she took credit for it, and she said, "When we, we came, we saw, and he died." <laughs> With that little hyena laugh that makes you want to spin her neck around like the exorcist lady. It, I it, mean, come on. It's crazy. Look, Gaddafi lived in a tent. He lived in a damn tent. Yeah. He gave all the money back to the people, all the oil money. He gave it back to the and, people. And call Saddam what you want, but he hated terrorists. He's a dictator. You know, Saddam was, was a CIA asset. 1959, he was CIA. We put him in power. He was our little puppet. Then all of a sudden, he wanted. He didn't want to. Uh, he didn't want to use the oil backed dollar I, he, anymore. He didn't and they took him out. He didn't want to make a comprador state like Mossadegh in fifty. Eight. 53, 1953. You know, or, or the 58 other ones. Yeah. You know, it just goes on. The list goes on and on and on. You know, everybody wants to blame an Iran. Then I'm going to get back to this woman. But just, uh, you know, I always take up for Iran because not that I'm some I I Iranian file, but because we always pick on these people. But we've had at least two regime changes in the la in 1953. The CIA took out Mohammed Mosaddegh. He had rock and roll in the streets. It was the most Western civilized uh, nation. It pretty much and still is. And now the CIA is, do, is trying to do a very similar thing, if not the, the same on some scale, to in the United States. Try, like a soft coup. They, a failed one at this point, but they'll keep trying. It's like shooting torpedoes, baby. They just keep shooting them. And however they can twist any event that happens naturally... Or that they make happen, they will twist it. And there's an art and craft to it if you study it just for a 10-year window. It's a media you psyop. You can see it's a, it's a mass psyop. Uh, look, real quick, real quick, we're going to break. Look, Tulsi Gabbard is introducing a bill to stop funding terrorism. And look, she needs to take it a step further and stop uh, funding the terrorist nation of Israel either. Okay, she needs to stop funding the uh, Palestinian uh, murders over there. So she needs to put that in the bill as well. But look, you listen to the Battle of New Orleans Radio right here on 990 AM WGSO in the Hall of Crescent City. We'll be right back. Amongst experts, it's an entirely different animal. If I had to name a creature to me, the world a better one There isn't a doubt that I would kick out These dirty, filthy leprechauns They run in your place right into the ground So many afraid to step to one Ladies and gentlemen We have finally figured it out At first We thought it was The Eskimos 
But now there's a strong consensus amongst experts. It's an entirely different animal. If I had to name a creature to maim and make the world a better one, there isn't a doubt that I would kick out these dirty, filthy leprechauns. They run in your place right into the ground, so many afraid to step to one. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Battle of New Orleans Radio. That's Leprechauns by Payday Monsanto. That is on his last album, Murder by Numbers. You buy his album, you're supporting us indirectly because he's supporting us. And I mean, well, literally part of the show. Part of the show. Brian's a part of the show. I mean, our listeners. When when he says it's a listener based show, it really is. We have our listeners show up at the door, come hang out with us, crack open a beer, hang out, go we, clean monuments, and we clean Brian, monuments. Brian's been out there cleaning the monuments. Then we all go back to our family and kids and all that good stuff afterwards. That's it. I mean, you know? we're just trying to survive like everybody else. Trying to, trying to put good energy back into the community. And we haven't had too many guests lately because we've been a little bit uh, discombobulated, you know, with the personal things going on with our jobs and whatnot. But we're still here. We're moving forward in 2017. But I think without any further ado, we have Renee from North Carolina. Go ahead, Renee. Well, hello, guys. I'm so glad y'all still um, have a brain. Y'all don't have such a severe case of Trumpomania that you, you can't look at things critically. High five, payday. Uh, is it Monsanto? Okay. Yeah. High five to you because I'm with you on that damn wall. It's going to be a pork barrel project. All you have to do is quit giving them the money, cut the benefits, get rid of the anchor baby law and all that. You could you could get rid of an enormous... They're going to go home. They're going to go home. They're, they're here because somebody wants them here. And, and another thing, a lot of those crowds are organic and real. They're all over the world. Soros don't even have that much money. A way to tell if a crowd is real or not often, one clue is... Are the signs all kind of alike pre-printed when yeah. they pass mm-hmm. them out? Or are they homemade? It, it, I didn't see any pre-printed signs. They are all people no, got there with their magic markers and their crayons. Wait, Nathan, so, Nathan has something to say about that. Hey, hey, Renee, that's a great point, but here's the deal. It's just like us being controlled. It's just like a few hundred people controlling seven billion. You don't need to actually have... All of the people, all the boots on the ground paid for. You just need a paid orchestrator at the top to rattle up a community, and then they orchestrate it. You really don't need every paid. And look, uh, uh, Goyim and I went to the, the protest here in New Orleans. It was the largest one I've seen uh, in New Orleans. It was about 1,500 people. 60, 60% Nathan and Renee were, I'd say, disenfranchised women. They have cats, no kids. They've had multiple abortions. And uh, and they're kind of disenfranchised, and they are organically there because they want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of something. But they're however, being whipped up. However, there was this little guy on a bike. He looked like an anonymous little InfraGuard guy, and he was following Nathan around. And Nathan got all kind of creeped out because this guy had his little face covered up, you know, with like a little bandana on his uh, lower chinny chin chin there. And basically, uh, Nathan was like, "Who is this guy? Who is this guy?" And he kept following him. But I was like, 20, 20 to thirty percent of the people definitely were paid protesters. And what happened was, yeah, they they marched. They did a, a peaceful protest for the most part. But then, of course, probably the paid protesters threw paint on New Orleans Police uh, Department vehicles. And that's the, uh, right. And, that's, and, uh, and so y- you have a, a certain part that's... The paid ones you know, are the bad ones. And they and they basically um, you know, infect the good ones, and they make them shed bad light on them. But, again, there was a probably 60 to 70% of radical feminist women there, cats, not kids, who were organically there with their own signs, but there were some fi- like signs and the same. Uh, you know, I have one on my truck. Yeah, they got the. They were handing out print signs. Yeah, I got the. Uh, we got the uh, leaflets and the brochures and picked up well, all see, this I stuff. Didn't, I didn't go to your New Orleans march. Like I say, I just know what I saw on TV. But I have some information I really need to get to uh, y'all. Go ahead. You saw it on now, TV. I huh? really hope. Am I dealing with a bunch of French Catholics here? Yes, you are. Aye. Oh, I am so happy because if Aye. y'all that are New England wasp, you ain't gonna like what I have to say at all. A wasp, uh, uh, a New Love England man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, White okay. Anglo-Saxon um, Protestant. Okay, well, this this is well. What is the establishment? Where is it? New England wasp. Okay, you see, we have to do a little backup history first. You know, you need to kind of remember how the Acadians got there, okay? The French-Indian War was the French and the Indians fighting against the British, and we lost. And then, uh, because they wanted us to take an oath 
and that we didn't want to take of allegiance uh, the, um, because we were afraid if war started out again, they'd make us fight against our own people. So they put us on boats and shipped us out to sea with thousands drowned. It was a kind of a genocide, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's how we ended up from, uh, uh, you know, Canada to the swamps of Louisiana, okay? So the thing is, you have to kind of remember, you see, uh, there was a time in our history where actually the Republican Party was all lost. And even the Catholic men were with the Democrats because the WASP denied equal rights to everyone else except them, including the white Catholic men. Okay? Now, this is the deal. There, um, what people don't realize, I don't have so much problem with Trump, but there are some people behind him that are scary as hell. He's, he's have, um, have you, are y'all familiar with the Council for National Policy? Yes. Oh, thank God. Now, let me tell you, this is where, if you want to make some of these hosts have a conniption fit that are really part of this, this is where a lot of the alternative right hosts and people that are kind of the bigger names in this get together in secret with the establishment Republicans they claim to hate. Mm. And the the establishment for 5013C church people, they claim to hate. Everybody better learn about the Council for National Policy. CNG, baby. Yes, you're very astute. I listen to you a lot. I even listen to shows I listen to you. I I listen to you a lot, Renee. Uh, You're very astute. Where have you heard? I I mean, when you call in, you you, you perk my ears up because you say a lot of interesting things. And I love your skepticism. I love it to death. And he's surrounded by vultures. You cannot deny, you know. Well, he's being he's he has a huge ego. The thing is, let me tell you, when you look into Pence and Kellyanne and all these people, everybody wants to talk about Soros. You better look at that right wing funding. There's an honest little Christian woman named Kelly McGinley. It's on YouTube. Kelly McGinley. She used to have a show called Retaking America. She quit because when she dug, she mm. found out some stuff. I'm thinking she probably got death threats. Okay, mm-hmm. if you listen to her show, Kelly McGinley, Calvinism, and she has mm-hmm. another one, I've, the CNP. I've... She says the greatest danger to all of us are the Calvinists, or what would you call right now these dominionist Christians like Cruz and uh, uh, Cruz. And, Cruz scares and me all to these death. People that are they're they're full of them behind Trump. Christians These honest. people, when you understand their religion, they believe God gave the earth to them. Yeah. And they want to bring in the kingdom of God, starting with America and then the world. They claim to be fighting against the new world order. Hell no. Oh. They're bringing it in for themselves with those little wasps at the top yeah. of the pyramid. Well, a lot of these organizations and groups, Renee, it. they get acclimated in there. You know, like the Birch Society, the John Birch Society. I, I don't believe that you know, from inception that that was, uh, you know, working for the New World Order. But eventually, you know, when it gets as it gets infiltrated, as co-opted just, anything, you, you know, anything and then big. just steered into a wall is yeah, what vac- they do it vaccines were great and, and, until and you had the mmr vaccine absolutely and the what, vaccines have a point see, but you the, know the, 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 uh, they've been co-opted the, the, the fulcrum with trump is his integrity uh, uh, vis-a-vis his love for america you know with regard to how much he really loves america like he says i believe he does but there's a power so hidden so f- strong so you, you know, deceitful. That's you know, that's a, a Truman quote, if I'm not mistaken. So Renee, that men do not sp- dare speak in condemnation of it above their breath. Oh. So Trump gets that. Uh, Trump gets that view of Kennedy's head exploding from an angle that no one's ever seen before. You know well, that old classic Bill Hicks skit. It's real. You know, well, in whatever well, permutation well, it exists, it exists. What was Kennedy? I see. I'm older than y'all. I was a lot. I was twelve years old. I remember when they elected Kennedy, the Protestants, first Catholic, president, the Protestants almost had a heart attack because they had control of the country this whole time. They mm-hmm. still do. That's that, the East. Yeah, and the so so wait, 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 let me ask Renee something. Renee, are you saying the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the WAS, still control America in two thousand seventeen? Oh, they still do. They do? No, no but look, th- that will hold up. It, and to Renee's what about point, the Zionists? Well, I think to Renee's point. That's the hidden hand. That, yeah, the, but, the, but that's the real that? hidden hand? 
Well, well, this is this. Okay, let me explain this. They used to have it a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay, that, that is the uh, up until up until like yeah, um, they lost the Christian, some control yes. after is, they burned, well, they, they drowned and hung the. Sometimes witches, okay? it escapes us, Renee, that there are there are. Uh, I would argue a hundred times more Christian Zionists than Jewish Zionists. Oh, there, oh, I'm with you. you know? the, 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 I think high five to payday. I think Here that's you. where you was getting at. I think that's kind of what I was taking at, at Renee. Is that kind of what you were getting at? Because that is the the true, uh, the real Zionists are all these Christian Zionists, yes, it, it, yes. and they work hand in hand with with the other ones. They're the so, outer porticos. They're they're the outer porticos to me that surround the center portico. But we haven't gotten to, just picture a bunch of circles like a bullseye instead of the pyramid. You know. They're, they're the ones, like the Freemasons, that's Judaism for the Gentile. They're, they're the actual bricks you know, that create the, the they, scenario. They create that, that wall so you can't penetrate, See, and, and who knows he, what's at the center. You know, I, Catholicism used to fight Judaism. They they used to they used to be anti uh, and not, now it's full of work. Go ahead, Renee. Not even because it's so secret, but because it, they make it so convoluted that you can't quite grasp, and everybody's working together. If you ask me anti prost or anything, and I'm fully aware. I've been the victim of some evil Catholics in Acadia, sure. and I agree that they're Catholic. What the, the Catholics uh, did in Europe, they did a lot of bad stuff in Europe. But make no mistake, who has controlled this? country from the beginning but they always try to take credit oh we built western civilization well yeah well how about there's some problems with it now and you take responsibility oh no no we only take credit my fa- one of my favorite sayings is success has many fathers but failure is an orphan when there's something wrong they try to pin it on everybody else it, it, the thing is another uh, thing free on youtube is there's this little guy, hardly known, from Dallas named Josh Reeves. Josh he, Reeves. He does, uh, you know, Council for National right, Policy. He, uh, right. Well, he does. Yeah. He has it's called The Secret Right. The Secret Right. The Secret Right classic. of Josh Reeves. If people want to know all about the where you can get a good education on these people who buy stealth. They have been plotting to take back take back this country. Josh Reeves did his homework on that. See, they had it 100%, and they kind of resent that they've lost a little bit of it, and they want it all. See, originally this country was set up really as a Protestant theocracy, and that's what these... Yeah, but it's been infiltrated at such a deep, on such a deep level, it's been infiltrated that they don't even know what hit them, and they don't control... Nothing. When you, when you control the issuance of the currency, you control everything. Now, yeah. my my analogy and allegory is: if I'm strapped in a in a gurney and somebody's beating the pee out of me, I'm I I want to get to that person first. I want to unstrap myself and find out who it is that's doing, doing the that. actual the orchestrator. You know who, okay, and yeah, then when I, I want to get my hands on them, and then I want to say, who are you doing this for? Who's paying you? We haven't gotten to that first point yet. We're still strapped in a gurney, and there's somebody whipping us. Yeah, Renee, we got to get you in studio because you got so much information. Go ahead. And I, I agree, the Jews are in this too. No, well, let's but, not let's let's qualify but, that. I see. I don't like that term. I got a lot of Jewish friends. I don't like that term. Uh-oh. You know, I'm, I'm careful about that too. I'm not down on the Jews. It, How would you qualify? I, 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 fair, I qualify it and clarify it as the international organized Jew. Right. If you are one of those, you are not an American. You cannot have sovereignty to any country. That's per your own manual, you know, ad nauseum. There's just so much. It's voluminous, the information that that uh, shows who these people are. Qualified. You know, and, Listen, the, and the level at which they operate. Renee, 30 seconds, Renee. Go ahead. You got 30 I'm, seconds. I'm not trained to Jekyll Island. There was one Jew. All the rest were wasps. Okay. Well, what's that tell you? But but they were, they were they were armed with the Rothschilds though. They were armed yeah. with the Rothschilds, no. and, and, and who were the Rothschilds? Feature from Jekyll. Well, you you got Warburg. You know, he's a, just another J.P. Morgan because he was a Rothschild frontman. Yep. But in other words, it took some collusion. The Wasp had to have participated. Uh, you, you must have read Tony Brown's book. All right. Well, look, look at Freemasonry. See Freemasonry, Renee. We're That's coming uh, to a Judaism break. Judaism for the Gentiles. Madeline New Orleans Radio. Seconds. Charlie from Los Angeles. Please hold. We're coming to you. And then Thank we also you, have uh, David in the North Shore, I believe. We're coming right back. Madeline New Orleans Radio. Great show. Madeline New Orleans Radio. We're back. Look, we're about to take Charlie from Los Angeles. And then we're going to David on the North Shore. 
But look, real quick. It's Caleb Hit. Oh, we got Caleb. What's up, Caleb? Caleb Hit's on Skype as well. Good to have him on Skype. You know, but after we take these calls, we're going to dive into these executive orders and actions by Trump. And they're they're pretty unbelievable. So, look, let's, without further ado, let's go to Charlie from Los Angeles. Yeah, Jets. How's it going? I like How's it going, Charlie? There's somebody there's pretty smart. I was listening to you, I don't know how long ago, but somebody made the comment that, uh, they had to bring Castro in to get rid of all those uh, mafia casino bosses out of uh, Cuba. Right. And uh, it kind of tells me that they pretty much let Castro stay there to keep a huge money laundering operation off the coast of Florida. Uh, and as far as their tobacco and their sugar was made, you know, you, you, they had an economic blockade against them. So the tobacco farmers and the sugar farmers were left happy. So I think there was more to the, the Cuba uh, uh, blockade, more of a hoax than anything else. Well, no, definitely. I want to say one thing about that. You know, you, you see uh, some of the few countries left that are resisting the Rothschild central banks. You know, like North Korea, for instance. They, um, Iran, of course, we're going with a, de- a demonic look at them. Like, okay, they're the enemy. Same with North Korea. But in the case of Cuba, they're resisting the central banks. And now we're kind of using a little bit of... Uh, Hey, come come over here by the ice cream van. Come over here by the white van. Come here, kiddo. But 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 you know, they're they're opening the doors now with them. But, but and Cuba, as uh, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, they're resisting the Rothschild central banks, and they're one of the few countries left in the world. So now we're using, I guess, like more of the uh, come over here. I'm the creepy old guy by the van. You know, come get the sugar over here. Come get the treat. You know, and and they're opening the doors up now. Obama did that last year. You know. Go ahead, that's, Charlie. That'll be the end of the sugar farmers if they ever get that sugar cane because that's the best in the world. Wow. So, um, one more comment about what Renee said about the Zionists. They, they have, in my opinion, a very strong influence. Um, Jonathan Pollard did his full sentence. He didn't get out early. He did his 30 years to life. He did 30 years. And so if they had ultimate power, they would have got him out because he did him such a big favor. It's hard to tell really what's going on. But it's gonna. You'll find out what's really going well, on. Well, you know what? I'd like, like to interject out. for a minute. You, you never know that because the reason that he could have, you know, been penalized the way he did in, was in the first place, might have been because he pissed somebody off. You know, so you never yep. really know what's going off. I don't think you can gauge it by a John something. You know, like a Jonathan Povert, uh, uh, with all due respect. Yeah, and it, another thing is, you know, in my opinion, I think they brought Trump in when Kerry and Obama cut off the flights into Israel during the Palestinian uh, uh, bombing three years ago or two and a half years ago. I really think they brought Trump in to stop the two-state solution. Hillary was the two-state solution crowd, and they got rid of uh, I don't think we, we, we get the... If we get the uh, uh, Hillary, and, Hillary was the perpetual... Was war, Hillary was the perpetual... Power. Hillary was the perpetual war solution, Charlie. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just got, I can't let that slide by. That's what Hillary oh, yeah. was. Okay, she was the perpetual war point. solution all around. She was not about any kind of solution in the Middle East vis-a-vis Israel and Palestine, <laughs> whether it was a two-state solution, you know, or uh, you wipe, you know, Palestine off the map solution. Listen, to payday and the listener, okay, if you let Hillary win, do you have these protests? Do you have this order by chaos that we know the globalists want? Or is Trump ushering that in and indirectly for them are they using his momentum i think either way it goes back to they'll take it and spin it and uh, as you see them desperately doing now with their news any way that they, they kind of like a crash. matador matador they, with the yeah, red they'll thing direct with, it you use you the know? bull's momentum and with sometimes them. things happen right. sometimes things happen that can be convenient for you other times things happen that are inconvenient for you but you can still redirect it like that tugboat you know those tugboats directing that ship. Yeah. You pull it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, but sometimes shit, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Yep. So they have yep. to make well, things happen. So what's your manufacturer? You know, yeah, what's your take you know, on that, Colin? Three casinos, and he ends up with three casinos in Atlantic City, and he doesn't know the difference between a marker and a fill slip on a crap table. It's kind of peculiar. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, look, Charlie. We got one minute, buddy. Look, I. This is Nathan. I, I have a lot of mixed feelings. I make good music, and I, I couldn't tell you what a cliff note or, a, a, you know, a, you know, I couldn't tell you an A chord from a D chord if I hear it, but I can play it. So, uh, you know what I mean? I, it's hard to judge a little snapshots. I'm sorry, Nate. No, you, you're fine, man. You know, 
but looking at all of his executive actions, I, I worry about the men behind the mirror as well. But y- these executive actions are pretty hard to 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 ignore. What you taking there, Charlie? Thirty seconds. Well, it, it, once again, it's it's more Muslims, just like right after nine eleven, and it, it sounds a little bushy. You know, there's black, what about blocking the, the, the Asians from coming in and stealing the jobs? Or all the people from I, India? I, the I, they're still coming in. I agree. Great point, Charlie. Please call in next week, man. We appreciate uh, you listening doubt, in yeah. L.A. Thank Good you, Good points you raised, Charlie. Thanks for calling. Call right, back. Now. All right, we'll be right back. Val and Orleans Radio. Ralph Sanji, WGSO. Attempt to induce a permanent state of fear and paranoia. Why, you ask? So you'll be frightened enough to hand over to the government willingly the few civil liberties you have left. I can't wait to drop a big old bomb. We're building them all day long. We won't make you sign a treaty and block all your zones. There has never been a reason to stop. That is no. That was Payday Monsanto on the Battle of New Orleans Radio. Good Lord, goodness gracious. My gang. Who would have thunk? Yo, so, you know, we were discussing a little bit about about the, the Trump executive orders and what they, they might, in, you know, the implications thereof and the people surrounding them and, you know, and a, a bunch of other things. What are your initial thoughts, my friend? I mean, look, regardless of the people behind him, at this point, we just, all we can do, this is all we got. But look, I'm a, before we, we got two calls, and I'm coming to y'all real quick, I promise. I just want to, you know, look, we have, look, number one here, and this is coming from, I think it's on Politico, providing relief from Affordable Care Act, great. <coughs> Freezing all regulations, great. Reinstating the Mexico City abortion policy, and that's not to push abortions on Mexico City, it's to stop any money for not NGOs that are, uh, you know, peddling abortions there. Okay, scrapping the TPP, beautiful. Freezing the federal workforce, beautiful. That's lovely. Advance yeah. of the Do- Dakota Access Pipeline, mixed feelings about that. I'm not really yeah, sure. You don't know what uh, riders it, are in that. It's humanitarian on the surface, but, you know, it yeah. is what it is. It, expediting environmental reviews on infrastructure projects, great. Promoting Made in USA Pipeline. That just pisses people off, yeah. you know, from the... From the jump, from the gate. Made in USA pipelines, beautiful. Reviewing domestic manufacturing regulations, beautiful. Increasing border security measures. I mean, who doesn't want border security? But the key to border security is just enforce cut, the law and, what? and cutting yeah. off the monopoly game show prizes. Yeah, you got I mean, to. There's a couple of things there, but uh, you got laws on the books, and this is across the board in America. Yeah. Yeah. You have laws on the books that exist. If you just enforce them. Things will change, you know. You enforce them the way that they're written instead of just you, 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 you pay committees to make new laws. Yeah, it's, no. por- it's pork barrel politics, and it lines people's pockets like nothing else. I, I or like few things. No, no doubt. I agree with that, Payday. Look, pursuit of undocumented immigrants, great. Reevaluating visa of refugee programs, okay, that sounds good. Strengthening the military. Well, I like what that says. That strengthening, and that Ron Paul said this a couple weeks ago. He says, we need to strengthen. No, no. What he said? He said no. I'm excuse me. I got that reversed. Doctor Paul said need to strengthen. Was it defense? There was a key. He said. And he said it needed to be the opposite. What they were, how were they wording? Of course, it needs to be defense. Anyway, I'm chopping well, that up. Um, you know, tr- yeah, tr- strengthen the true defense. R- instead of strengthening them, because military just to me, right? It, it connotes you know uh, force, because that's really all all that it's been used for. And as they've been, they've been. You know, George. As we Washington. all know we see like that the old school generals have been taken out. You know, at every chance, like the people with that old school thought, yeah. and they're replacing them with those young Turk mindsets mm-hmm. that are just new world order bots. Yeah. Look, you know, red red high heels on soldiers. Yeah, and Pat yeah. Patton, well, uh, Patton woke up at one point, right? There you go. Gotta watch and, out. And they got to make sure that never you, happens again. Goyam just read my mind. Look what they did to Patton. If I'm not mistaken. He was killed with one of those things that you, the air guns that you kill a uh, you know bovine with. Yeah, he, he, you know they just hit him. 
He and said he, he, he said we fought on the wrong side of World he, War II. We fought afterwards. on the wrong side. He said well, wow. re- reorganizing the National Security Council. Okay, that sounds good. Implementing a lobbying ban, beautiful. Defeating ISIS, okay, that sounds great, but we know we've been funding ISIS yeah. and we've created ISIS. It, I mean, we've created all these organizations. Mujahideen, Hamas was created by the Mossad. 1927, British intelligence created the Muslim Brotherhood. Go ahead, I man. mean, if that was from, if that was from the, the horse's mouth, meaning Trump, that would be defeating ISIS would be defeating Hillary and or her legacy and anything that falls in line with it because and, he says after all that Hillary created ISIS and he's not he wasn't lying yeah she helped she helped with that whole uh whole project for yeah. sure and you had McCain they're working on both sides of the aisle see these people know they understand we're talking the, the, the Soros's but even the people behind him well you know the moneyed interests know that in order to get like my man uh, from from um you know Kevin Spacey on the show he plays What's it called? He says, we know if you want to get something through, you have to grease both sides of the aisle. Right. And here we have a Hillary Clinton and John McCain working hand in hand to create America's number one, current number one enemy. Quit so hog- what does that tell you? Quit hogging the KY, John McCain. Yeah. <laughs> he, he met, Songbird McCain. He met with their, song for payday. He met with their leaders as well. Reducing regulations. That's number 18. Look, most of those sound pretty good. It's hard to argue with that. But look, let's take these two calls. We have David from the North Shore. Then we're coming to you next, Lance. Go ahead, David. Sorry to have you make it hold so long. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I appear um, on... Uh, Chris Dorsey's uh, show. David Dudery, I know you, my friend. How you are? How are you? What's going on? Well, hello, uh, hello, uh, Payday. I'm sure you're very familiar by now with Renegade Broadcasting and uh, Chris Dorsey and the uh, rest of the bunch. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, cut straight to the chase. What what we're looking to do is actually take a step forward to abolishing what we see. We what we see is a criminal government on all sides, which is waging war against the people. Everything we talk about, vaccines, uh, uh, vaccines, uh, uh, media, Chem all trail. of that is that is all weapons of war. Chemtrails, uh, defoliants, um, uh, the way they treat veterans, because they, they surely don't want an, uh, an uprising. So we established all of this. We established that, that um, we know that uh, homelessness is out of control. There are more there, there are more vacant homes than there are people on the street that need of homes. There's more work that needs to be done than people that are able to work. I, I work in the city. I drive from the North Shore to the city every day. So I, I see New Orleans, which even our local news admits, uh, is looking more and more every day like a third world country. Yeah. Now, yeah. It, we give so much money to Israel dual Israeli citizens every year from APAC. Mm. Now, what we are promoting at Renegade Broadcast... Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a good sir. idea. All right. Yeah. Yeah, the, I'm with you. The, the, uh, the Apocalypse. Because mm. you guys you guys were talking about um, the law earlier. We uh, these, these laws on books, they're just statues. They're not real laws. Sure. See, the, only, the only law is the uh, Constitution for the United States, which comes from our common law, from, um, from our um, ancestors. And that's what the Constitution was always supposed to be based on, was our, was our common law. And we, have, we, the people, we have a right to abolish um, a criminal government if it gets out of control. What we're saying is, hey, we're not, we're not going along with your courts, we're not going along with your statutes, and we're not going along with your... Uh, with your unlawful uh, executive orders, no matter who gives it, because by now, let's let's face it, uh, Trump. He's he, no no matter what anybody on this network thinks about him, he's he's pretty compromised. He is he is surrounded by the enemy. I mean, when I when I uh, turn on a television and I see uh, people, he is surrounded by yeah, it yeah. is it is it is. And at the end of the day, David, you know, he's a steam release valve. If and if if when people remain complacent and then rest on their laurels. Laurels, it's gonna. He becomes a, just a release valve, and uh, that's. It, it, see, it, the problem is the goyim, and we need to understand our power. It's just like that ants movie. But, but payday, you listen, know, n- like, n- not to cut you off. Let me the say the bugs this. movie. Like the caller said, though, they're using the military goyim, and then they throw them out like an old prostitute. Like get out of my hotel room. They yeah, throw them on the yeah. street. They vaccinate them. 
50, 30, 40, 50, who knows how many boot camp vaccines they give them. Well, it and goes, then, well, you, you know, 90% of the Zionists are Christians, and, and, and they, that's just unacceptable. And, and these goyim know how to use a weapon, so if things, you know, hit the fan proverbially, they don't want them turning on their own, so they want to make sure they're sick, they're vaccinated, they're on the street, they can't get employed. They got them fat, sassy, sassy lazy, and stupid. But back to the caller, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, David. Oh, but well, you, uh, points yeah, well taken. We're with the apocalypse here, the apocalypse. Go ahead. Okay, uh, and uh, once again, thank you. Um, well, uh, like I said, come um, come March twenty sixth to twenty eighth, we're going to um, we're going to march on APEC. And what what we mean by that is, is uh, we're we're going to represent on all sides of the coin, no matter because this. Though I am I'm very pro European. I always say my people come first, but this is a human rights issue on all sides because we we obviously. Um, have so many groups like uh, pro-Palestinians, and um, and we we know all these ethnicity groups throughout the world. They're all being genocided. It's just the whites is uh, they they just so happen to be working on us. Uh, well, I believe the whites the white the, the war on on whites is the most overt. It's like they can get away with it. There, there's the the other wars are I think just as intense. And, and but they already have a foothold there on what they can do, and and they keep it. It, it, they keep it on a hush while they mobilize these very people who are they are they're genociding in the dark to make it acceptable to genocide white people in the light and all no or all pun intended however you want to take that you know it, it, you right. can it's just okay to hit a trump supporter because you deem them a nazi you, if you call them a nazi and convince yourself and uh, the crowd around you that they're a nazi it's okay to assault them and it seems accepted, and you know, to me, that's unacceptable. It's what makes me, well, you know, want to say, you know, everything that you tell me, I can't say. I'm going to scream it from the rooftops. Just their existence represents you know? the white patriarchy, so they deserve to get yeah. slapped yeah. in the face. Yeah. Even if that day they, they made did this no, acceptable. Even that day, if they did nothing wrong, they deserve yeah. that. You know, for and that's our fault. Hey. As goyim and as white people and as black people and whatever race or group you belong to, that's. Your fault in the, in the toto as a Gentile. And, 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 it's your fault. Exactly. And most of the blacks, whites are saying that we're, we're Christians and we believe in thou shalt yeah, not hurt others. Because you fail to recognize that there's a war on you yeah. as a group and as an individual. You fail to recognize that. So it's on you. That's why we have these, these half a fag people walking down the street all day long. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. Right now we have the protests in the street now. You know what? What we've talked about this on the show a lot. Now that the football's coming to an end, the distraction comes to an end, and that's typically when they start rabble rousing us. They feminize the men, and they, you know, they've made the w women fill that role. And then it's, the, it's, the women, the women are radicalized. It, Cats, not yeah. kids. Twelve abortions a, a year. Hey, look, look, Dave. We really appreciate you calling in. Look, I'd like to, we'd like to promote the apocalypse. So look, call in. We'd like we to get be you a as part a guest. Of that look, hit hit me up. Go to uh, send me uh, an email at battlenola at gmail dot com. We'll get you information. Or Love call up his personal guest. line. Go yeah, to Nathan. nine eight five six four zero eight eight two two. Like Larry Nichols, I give out my uh, own personal line. That's so look, scary. so look, call me oh, up. Okay. Look, we're yes, sir. And, and and very, Go ahead. very briefly, uh, gentlemen, you mentioned earlier when I was uh, listening in that uh, you guys. Uh, usually hang around the uh, studio in the evening. Now I'm, now, I'm pretty close. Now, I would really love to actually meet face-to-face -face with somebody so we can, uh, we if, if we're really serious. We can shake that, hands, yeah. Come on. That, that'd be rolling. good. We're, we're, we're here. We're not hiding. The ground level, gentlemen, that's what we need. Is, is, uh, is we agree on with the that. Ground, because mm -hmm. why else would we be talking about this? And I really thank you guys for taking my call, and I look forward to look uh, working uh, with you. Thank you very much. Th thank you, David. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Look, Lance, we're coming to you uh, right after the break. Sorry for uh, making you hold so long. And then, Phil, you're after Lance. Battle of New Orleans Radio. We are the anti-New World Order choice cool. in, in New Orleans, so support us. Come please. meet us in the studio. Come meet Payday Monsanto. Come get an autographed album, Murder by Numbers. Come on down. Mm -hmm. We're here. We're in the flesh. Come on, meet us. Battle of New Orleans. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Battle of New Orleans Radio right here in the home of the First Amendment, 990 AM, WGSO in the heart of the Crescent City. Man, right here in beautiful New Orleans. It, Exclusive! It, <laughs> Exclusive. Read all about it. 
<laughs> it goes out to our boy brother. It we goes work out with to our boy brother. Crazy, yeah. crazy. Look, man, we appreciate all the support and all the callers, man. And, and you know, y'all, y'all the ones that make the show. But look, when you support, go hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. You know, if you want to buy a commercial, look, we have some cheap rates on commercials. Call me up, send me an email, battlenola at gmail dot com. Uh, you know, we, we have some, some new uh, prospective uh, clients, you know, in the wings. So we're about to cut some new commercials. So, look, uh, we got some spots available. So, look, call me up, 985-640-8822, or just send me an email. So, look, we appreciate y'all's support. But, look, let's take this call. Let's go to Lance. Without further ado, we surely appreciate you, Lance, uh, for holding. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. What's happening, guys? Man, great show. Great bumper music, too, man. That was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this war on whites, I just want to, you know, you kind of spawn a little idea as I, I was holding. Uh, I mean, if, what if you walked up to somebody and convinced yourself that that Muslim is an extremist and you punch them in the face? You know, they, these guys, they don't, they don't realize that whether you discriminate on someone because of their race or because of their ideals, unless they're physically harming someone, you just can't, you can't walk up and do that. Absolutely. So, um, and I, it, and they know that, but you just got to turn it around on them and say, okay, well, what if that was a Muslim? You know, right? I mean, do all Nazis, even like the brand new Nazis that just start up and just signed up today, do they need to have be beaten or do they need to be killed? I mean, there's a, there's a level of guilt based on what people do. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so yeah, man, it's it's crazy out there man but i'm i'm really um more concerned you know i know we have chemtrails and we have so many different conspiracies going on in the background my biggest thing is this infiltration of islam in our nation in the democratic party and the corruption that is obviously commingled there i mean look at this women's march everybody knows that doesn't pr promote um equality for women islam does not at all it's the opposite and it's in and how can the homosexual community sit back and just accept that as like just fine when they know that they're being taught that they should be killed and um i'd, I'd like to hear what y'all think about that but yeah, yeah Lance, well, i'm just uh, I'm, uh, personally i'm thinking you know what on the surface it it seems a lot like that, but I think if you dig a little deeper, there's no Sharia law that, that is going to be implemented in America because oh, the yeah, Noahide sir. laws are basically already on the books. In you up know? north, yeah, up north they've got they've got towns that have pretty much been taken over. Yeah, Dearborn, Michigan. No, that, right. that I agree. But look, check, check this out. They are allowed. They are. I've been saying this for several years. The Muslims. Granted, there's some horrible problems, um, but but check this out. They are used. They are a tool. They are a destabil uh, destabilization this force. Destabilization the, the, mechanism. The internationalists yeah. are going to use that to destabilize us, just like they use use them in the Middle East. You know, you, you it, take these downtrodden people, right, and promise it, them the world. You know, but, but you. You put them into a situation where they just do, it cannot work. It's forced, and it, it's been shown over and over not to not to work. But yet, the powers that should not be have a tremendous has have exhibited tremendous ability to convince people that this is actually a benefit, a strength. Diversity is a strength, even when it doesn't really blatantly not work. Because it's forced. This this relocate you know? this relocation plan going on right now, guys, is probably the number one thing that they're doing as we fight. As we fight, it's probably the, because you're going to see the commercials, the Coca Cola commercials. You're going to see the the propaganda with the Super Bowl. You're going to see it with Chuck Schumer's tears. And going, you have right. the altruistic West. Yeah, that at, fall for this. And I saw it this summer when I was at the, at the airport. They tug at I, your heartstrings. Yeah, at, at the ultra. And if you don't accept it, you're not a humanitarian. You're not a good Christian. No, that's, but but I saw it with my own eyes. Guys, Go ahead. Do you guys have a pool going on how many Islamic uh, actors they will have during the Super Bowl commercials yet? No, no. The, we, we, the, I don't know, man. There's going to be a lot of uh, social engineering. Yeah, it's a token. I will say this. Lance, I was at the DMV in the DMV in New Orleans at the one on, um, shoot, it's by right, uh, West End, right? Yeah, the one by West End. If you look at the picture, there's a little, like, uh, picture 
um, like a little post-it picture. It's black and white, and all the little humans, they're like little cartoons, and all of them are wearing like uh, burkas and jihabs. I swear, on, on on the picture. I'm not making that up. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, it's embedded. Hey, Lance, I got a couple. We only got a minute left, but, but I, maybe if you can stick around after the break, I got a question for you. What is your take on, you know, the supposed us fi- always fight? You know, we're fighting ISIS, but yet on the same hand, we give them money. We give them weapons. We do airstrikes for ISIS. So I, I would love to really get... We, you know, your and, take on and, that. And on a simple level, look at this. We we drone these countries, and then we bring them here. What what right. enemy would ever do off. that? I mean, this has got to well, be... We, we need to stop being the police of the world. Amen. Sure. George Washington and, and was totally against it. go them. in when there's an international uh, it's, you know, group of people, that uh, countries that actually ask us to come and help. Well, Lance, stay on, stay on for the break. We're going to be coming to break right now. Ballon Oral, stay on. We're going to come right back to you after the break. Ballon Oral's radio. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Battle of New Orleans Radio right here on 990 AM WGSO. Look, we got Caleb Hit over there on Skype, brother. How you doing, Caleb? You- I'm doing good. We, w- we want to get your two cents on Lance. Lance, are you still on the line? Lance, are you still there? Well, I'm I guess- here. Oh, Caleb, I want to get your take on what he's saying here. We kind of uh, had you on there on the side there. Um, go ahead, Lance. Keep on bringing up what you're saying about this radical Islam state and what you're concerned about for America. Wait, wait. Oh, you know, yeah, well, I mean, dude, they teach this stuff openly. Um, I have a video I, I posted on Facebook the other day, but it's basically there, you know, a guy gets up, he asks an Islamic teacher, you know, hey, reporters keep calling us extremists, and what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? And he, so he answered the question, he said that, uh, you know, these are the teachings of Islam to stone people, to kill homosexuals, and that's, that is the best punishment possible for, and do you agree with that? And they all said yes, and they, he said, are you extremists? And they said no, and he said, that's right, because this is the core teachings of Islam. And um, this is, it's plain as day, HD video proof, that, and there's hundreds of videos like this. It's obviously that they have infiltrated the Democratic Party. Um, they have infiltrated most of Europe. And um, you see what they've done, you know, with the, with the migrant situation. And, yeah, I mean, the percentages, you can call it what you want to, but you can see, like, masses of people coming into your country. It's, they're not going to assimilate, and that's not what America's about. We're, we'll accept immigrants, and we'll take the weak, and we'll take the poor and the hungry, but they have to want to agree with our, our, our laws and our society and this democratic society. And, and right now, it's... Uh, it, it's just not that's not going to happen with these uh these refugees and what's worse about it is for every thousand refugees that you bring here you could have saved ten thousand of them if you took care of them in neighboring countries hmm. you know yeah. and, and we have saudi arabia sitting on their hands with well, largest you know, country in the middle east there no, no well well, well, Lance, they're not sitting on their hands. Saudi Arabia is is He's in on it. Yeah, they are the Wahhabists that actually promote. Well, see, right. see, like everybody always wants to blame Iran, Iran, Iran. Iran's actually the Sunnis who actually are the ones that that don't like ISIS and Al Qaeda, which are the Saudi Arabian brands. The Sunnis, right. uh, most of it, are less radical, but yet we can't. We got. The, the West has to have the Middle East decimated, destroyed, demoralized, the whole nine yards. You know what I'm saying? So how do we do that? So we use this uh, Wahhabist force to to do that, and then and then we we take out all of the the Muslim countries who are stabilized, like Iran used to be stabilized, which it still is today. There's, I mean, the whole thing with Iran. We have to remember um, the people that run our media. Okay, have a, a disinterest. They don't like the Iranians and the same people. You know what I mean? So, so we we have to remember that. So we we're we're painted a. We're, they show us a picture. So they destabilize. They relocate. Then they control, say, the opium fields of Afghanistan, and the entities that are left behind. Is that what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I mean, all of that, man. It, it, you know what I mean? Crazy. It, it, it's it's totally crazy. Just like Assad, Assad was very pro West. We got to destabilize that, destroy them. Libya, very pro West. We got to destroy that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So the whole nine yards. Go, you Caleb, know. what you think of this? Well, I think you got everything so topsy turvy in the Middle East. It's like 
We shouldn't play around. Stay out the playground. Yeah, I'm out. Right. I mean, I'm with, you know, people like Ron Paul, who's, you know, we need to stay away from, you know, intermingling with another country's business, internal affairs, as far as that goes. Yeah, what's your take on that, Lance? Well, as my old buddies would say, you need to stop messing with that dude. Yeah, basically, <laughs> that's what we need to do with all of these countries. Defund the oil industry over there. We got plenty of oil here. Let's get our oil. Let's connect from the other side of the world. Let them kill each other <coughs> like they always have for 1,400 years. Well, or what have we, what have we been doing as an empire, fellas? You know, what does an empire do? It bleeds the center to expand the perimeter. And that's what we've been doing. And the people have been bled so dry that they're starting to wake up that, you know, the fakery isn't working. And the very people who are or who are disseminating the fakery are accusing, and, and successfully on many levels, others of, of uh, putting out fakery. Right. So, have, I mean, right. I think that's that why, only that should only illustrate the control that exists. But it, it, it's a house of cards. Listen, whether you like it's it or not. Listen, it's whether you like it or not, 2017 America is going to play out like this. Social justice warriors are going to be on one side pushing for the um, humanitarian aid of relocated war refugees that we droned and all that. Whether we were in on it or not. This, I mean, they're against this, They're just so, uh, this is uh, abhorrent. Exactly. These, and, these and people, are, we're bo- the pe- very people they're supporting and fight for are bombing them. Go and and at the same time, you're going to have Trump on the other side saying, you know, we got to stop this. we got to stop this. And in the end, though, I mean, you, you could see it's coming. You could see the relocation plan in the millions, well, if I were to predict, in the millions yeah. are going to be coming to already come to Europe. Yeah. They said five to seven million are coming. In. The EU said in 2017, five to seven million. They're making their relocation push now. Well, what does that learn helplessness do? It's almost like Trump, and we discussed this off air for a bit. You know, Trump is saying, look, I'm going to make your life better, you people who call me a Nazi. And then he's exhibiting this. He's actually going to, you know, uh, overtly, quantifiably make their lives better by in many permutations. One, providing jobs. But they don't. These people don't want to work. They get paid to call Trump a Nazi and anybody who supports Trump a Nazi, so they can then de. You know, I have a line: Let them dehumanize you. They they will murder you with glee. And in a sense, that's what they are doing. When they call you a Nazi, they dehumanize you. So they can therefore punch you, and it's accepted. I don't get it. Go ahead, Lance. With one word, with one word, you dehumanize. They, you know, I know that they protest everything that he does. He needs to go ahead and just rip the Band-Aid off. That's it. Get it done. They can't immobilize in every city on every day. That's what I say. Uh, that's what I say. This is still Lance. Yeah. Rip the band-aid off and perform that surgery, but make, much needed before it's too late. Make all your moves on Friday and Saturday when the social justice warriors are busy chasing premarital yeah. sex and alcohol. And That's buying good. cats. They'll be too busy yeah. and then and, and getting cat litter. That right, day. Guy, guy. All right, Liz, yeah. thanks for the call, man. Call next thanks, week. Guys. We Great appreciate job, the call. Thank you. Look, let's go to let's go to Phil the Patriot. He's from the Patriot Cave. Then we got Brian after that. Go ahead, Phil. Phil. Oh, it's Phil the Patriot. Yeah, good evening, brother and sister, Christian American patriotic hostages. Welcome to Operation Zombie Thug Apocalypse 2017. Apocalypse. Stone, the lunatic, Luciferian, communist, Karl Marxist media. The old Black Panther <laughs> Lives Matter domestic stealth terrorist organization movement. George Soros is an international war criminal that needs to be arrested Once and in Russia. prison permanently if not executed publicly on TV. George Soros paid for and financed the murder and execution of many, many people, including Supreme Court Judge Anthony Scalia, and paid Ooh. for and still pays for protests and riots all across America. The Black Panther Lives Matters, United Nations, is a stealth domestic terrorist organization. The United Nations is an international stealth terrorist organization and the Bible are you ready for New World Order, Apocalypse, World War Three events? Are you ready for zombie thug attacks in every American city all across America, including football games? Are you ready for the most satanic, fake, fascist Super, t- Super Bowl halftime show, Phil. America? Wake up! Don't listen to the damn Democrats! And I do mean damn Democrats! Ah! Yeah. Phil the Patriot, a man after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, execute them live on television. 
And, you know, in cases like George Soros, I think he's already wanted in Russia, dead or alive, or just uh, ostensibly. To me, I mean, and it's only right this guy's wanted in Russia. He should be wanted everywhere. He shouldn't be allowed to land in any... Especially in America. Yeah, but, but listen, Especially listen. Especially America! Payday, Nathan, Brian, everybody in the studio. I was saying it today. What, on, a, on a Wednesday, people are at home watching 12 hours of coverage and need of college football selection day of what college these 18-year-olds... And they're analyzing this like this is like... This is more important than their family. Yeah, they're this arguing is more important than source. We, they're fighting over. You know, I can't believe he picked LSU instead of uh, FSU. He's he's a five star. No, he's a four star. He's got upside. And they're fighting I, over this, yeah. and not their like family. Uh, well, you know, their like, future. Like they're Jones, not fighting the globalists. Like Mr. Jones said, and he made he made a brilliant observation yes, ten too. years ago. You know, it's 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 a it's a facsimile. They, they're, the, the tribalism that should be present in them has been transposed with, with to with football. Team. And it, it, that's a facsimile of their tribalism. Redskins. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's, it's... They're trying it, to ban that, too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I wear a Redskins hat for people that, that, you know, we, we should have a webcam. Thing, but I'm not a Redskins fan. I hate the Redskins. That's why I wear it. As a, it's got bleach and paint over it. And, <laughs> you know... It's uh, kind of funny because that's the one that they've been trying to uh, eliminate, actually. Yeah. Say it's not PC, but... It, you know, yeah, I mean, it is our new tribe. The football on, teams are our new tribe. On Wednesdays, they should be tuning in to Battle of New Orleans Radio. They might be learning something. Yeah. Instead of turn off the football in the 870 AM here in New Orleans, turn yeah. on WGSO, turn up your dial. And for those hearing us live right now and who appreciate us, you know, we're at the 11th hour at this point. We've we got 15 minutes left. You know, tell three friends if you appreciate us. Send a link. To at least three. As I said, I'm going to do 3,000 is my goal this month. To, to In one way or another, send, get 3,000 people to see my message. Maybe 300 or 30 or three will tune in. Come meet us. Come meet us. What's the address here? Three. Well, you, you can find it. Should, should, should we give that out? Should we give that out? You know what? Yeah, listen to Jeff tomorrow. He'll tell you. Well, we'll see. We should see David Deuteray next week, who calls into Renegade, which I had a falling out with, by the way. You know, I, I, Chris Dorsey is a cool guy on the surface, but he called me a shill when I called in. So I basically told him to go on a sexual excursion with himself, and you know, called Jeffrey him out for, for what he is going to the Epstein you know, Island. It is what it is. If we're all fighting the same demon here, then there should be no uh, knee jerk. Uh, infighting just Caleb, should occur. Caleb, listen, uh, we got about one and a half seconds. I'm anything left. but a shill, as you. I mean, come on. Payday's 100. How, how on earth could Payday be a shill? Because Payday takes a pay cut. I'm going to call my name Pay Cut. Pay Cut Monsanto. Pay, pay Cut DeSanto. <laughs> that's 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 a bro brother would say. Where's Pay Stub at? <laughs> pay Stub. <laughs> All right, Caleb. Man, I know that we got a lot of topics going on. What have you seen this week with the executive orders from Trump? What's your take on what's going on? <laughs> And what do you think of his appointee? What do you think of his new appointee there, uh, his replacement? We'll come to you right after this, Brian. Well, I think that overall, from what I've seen, I think they're they're good uh, as far as that goes. As far as, um, I don't know, I'll, I might have to defer back to you guys right now, actually. No, no, you're good, brother. No, you're, you're, good. You're, you're good, man. You're good. We just wanted to give you an opportunity to chime in, Caleb. We appreciate it. Yeah, and anytime you feel, the, you know, the, if the mood strikes... As yeah, always, yeah. chime in. And yeah. you know, at our show, we got more and more people involved. Now Brian's in the studio because you know what? It costs us money to and do yeah, the show. And before we go, I was just going to say we have to. You we got to chime in with Brian here. He's, Brian. he's been on the show before talking about the monuments. He's come and helped us yeah. clean the monuments. Yeah. Brian's a caller. Brian, and a what's fan your take, show, man? You ready? He's supporting the show. He's actually supporting the show on foot and in, in, in uh, you know, taking raw time, child money. Taking you know? time away from his family, yeah. two children, everything. Go ahead, Brian. So, I mean, what, what, uh, 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 you uh, like putting uh, people on a spot. That's uh, what it is. <laughs> no, it's not about that, Brian. I mean, no, just, my whole uh, the executive orders are good. I mean, I've been looking at everything this week, and everything's looking good. I support Trump at this point. Yeah, exactly, I, I do too. Somebody was telling me something that he could actually stop the move to uh, remove the monuments. Is that true? Oh, I'm sure he could. I he mean, could sign an executive order and probably do anything at this point. He can stop the Trilateral Commission, Southern Poverty Law Center, and these guys. Yeah. And these, yes. Yeah? Sure. In yes. a rundown, you know, it looks like his e executive orders uh, were reversals of previous executive yeah, uh, orders. I mean, I could just glaring just like two or three option. right off the bat. Uh, 180. Okay, look, look, we're about to take a break. 
Look, we got Brian from Metairie on hold. Not to be confused with Brian, who's in studio, who's also from Metairie, correct? Call me B. All right, B. <laughs> All right, look, we, we, we got B in All studio. Right, B. We got Brian in Metairie. I'm Nathan Lawrence, and we got Mr. Mr. Anti-New World Order rap himself, Payday Monsanto. I know musicians who think Payday is the best rapper alive. Go support his music. I think he's the best rapper alive, so go so support him. from Mardi Gras. Kathy Cullen, he said he was... He's got a cool it, it, voice. It, go, 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 buy, love. go buy Murder <laughs> by Numbers. Go, go buy his catalog on Amazon. Murder by Numbers is a great album. Or, C, or, or CD Baby. We got Caleb hit on Skype. We got Goyim here. Look, come party with us. Call us up. Brian from Metairie. We'll be, we'll be uh, let's coming identify, to you. Let's identify those war pigs and who they really are. That's right. Battle New Orleans Radio will be right back. Good. Condensed that. Battle New Orleans Radio. Look, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be right back. Listen to me. We're just coming right back after the break. Sorry about that. Look, we're about to bring Brian on the line. But right before that, look, we were we were discussing some stuff, you know, off air. Just I'm gonna say it in a minute if I can. Look, um, B in studio brought up you Mitch Landrew, and I'm coming to you right right after this, uh, Brian. He brought up Mitch Landrew. This, um, in the sanctuary cities and, and what Trump's going to do with sanctuary cities. And I, and, and I was bringing up the point that, look, at this point, every city is a sanctuary city because we've signed on to the United Nations at every level because every city in America is designed by the United Nations via the American Planning Association. That is the planning arm to set the master plan and the design, and by them doing this, and th the cities also receive grant money from these UN NGOs that usurp our freedoms and our rights, and then we are basically uh, run and governed at that point by a world government body that is the surface bodying element of the world government. It may not be the hidden hand, but it's the, the surface that is set well to... To, to really run our lives, and it tells you... It's made to, to, to look local, Nathan, and there it is, ICLEI. And it, sound, it is like it sounds, ICLEI, yeah. International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. Now, they just, 1984, you in HD, right there, when they tell you International Council for Local environmental initiatives if it's international it can't be local yeah i mean what make up your mind here Kinda like it, the patriot so act that, oh the patriot act that's got to be good uh, for it. under the rubric of that they make the there if you read that it's one of the blueprints where they make it you know very clear that they want to make it seem like it's a local thing and make everybody feel like it's a you know uh, when, when we're doing it on a, on the masses scale on, on a mass scale, let's right, bring, right. let's bring let's bring, Brian, let's bring Brian from Metairie in this. Brian, uh, appreciate you calling. Appreciate you holding. Sorry, this is the so ledger long. domain. This is the craft of these. This is the magic of these people, and you can see it. Read it in Ickley. Brian, go, go ahead, Brian. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, How sir. We, man, we, we appreciate it, man. We, uh, we're doing good, brother. Appreciate you calling in. I hope this finds everyone's family doing well in the new year. I truly believe with all my heart that, that Mr. Trump, President Trump, is doing the best that he can. And I truly believe that he and his wife have made peace with God because they know that their lives and their children's lives are more on the line than any other president in the United States history. I agree. I, I, I cannot disagree. I mean, look what they're doing to his son. Look what they did to, yeah. to his son months ago. You know, and said that he was what? Uh, autistic. You know, autistic, and now they're saying, what, he might become a mass shooter? I mean, yep. these people are sick. They called his son a rapist, and it, it just goes downhill from there. Uh, a few little fast things. I know time Go ahead. is short. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, in the first time in history, we have all 10 of our aircraft carriers in port. The nuclear weapons aren't uh, 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 unloaded. They stay on the carriers. The majority of our submarine fleets... Or in, dry, or, in, or in dock with their missile bays open. And what disturbs me even greater, in only a very, very faint time did Fox talk about part of the story, but for the third time now, Russia has said that, that they have the capability in sustaining a first strike on the United States. Not only that, but as of December, the fourth tier of their, of their, their missile capabilities uh, if you if you would think of having a crown in four different uh, like like a king's crown but in four different successions 
their last missile uh, 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 to be deployed around their country is their basically out like our Star Wars to where they can shoot any st- satellite at any distance, the greatest distance to the least distance. Uh, uh, now, why would you have a, a president of a nation to tell another nation three times that they were ready for a first strike, well, and then in October... Well, in November, I'd like, I trust you, I trust you, but I'd like to verify it, that. Well, I mean, I, I think we what we have is a lot of uh, mis... Uh, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of misdirection well, and misinterpretation well, and disinterpretation. Well, we got one minute. Well, we got one, one minute. minute guys. Well, one, one second, Brian. I want to say something real quick. Well, I, look, look. One last thing. Go, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. He, he also they had their their, their uh, um, they he ran a a, uh, a nuclear drill to where almost 50 million Russians. Uh, Went into uh, we, hard and bunker. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We, 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 we heard this. We, we, we appreciate it, Brian. We got to run, man. Look, I, I, I want to say this. I want to say this real quick. Of course, Putin said that because we drove offensive ballistic missiles to his border. So he was preparing to take a nuclear strike because that's what we was acting like we were going to do via NATO. So yeah, look, appreciate and, your call, Brian. I think the, the context in which that has been disseminated th- but, via mainstream media has is, is just blown out of proportion but, because he basically said we're ready to defend ourselves. Battle of New Orleans Radio. Check us out every Wednesday night next week. We'll be back.